I'm Evie Fashong. I'm a PhD student at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution in Don Anderson's lab, and for my thesis research, I study harmful algal blooms in the Alaskan Arctic. Harmful algal bloom, or HAB as we sometimes shorten it, is any sort of algal bloom that causes harm to humans or to the environment. A lot of the time this is because these algae are producing toxins. So in the Alaskan Arctic where I'm working, we're looking at a specific kind of algae called Alexandrium catenella, and this produces something called paralytic shellfish toxins, which cause paralytic shellfish poisoning as they build up in shellfish and other organisms that eat this toxic algae. These blooms happen all over the world. Generally, we see Alexandrium blooming at more temperate latitudes, like here in Massachusetts, uh, or even on the Pacific Northwest, you'll find blooms of Alexandrium, but their occurrence in the Arctic is much, much more recent. There's a long history of Alexandrium in the Gulf of Alaska, uh, but only recently have blooms started to be identified in the Bering Strait and then further north in the Chukchi Sea and even at the western edge of the Beaufort. So our 2022 research crews aboard the Norseman II left from Nome and it covered locations in the northern Bering Sea near St. Lawrence Island, uh, the Bering Strait, Kotzebue Sound, the Chukchi Shelf, and all the way over into the western Beaufort near Okiagvik. We collected many different kinds of samples. We collected sediments to look for the benthic resting stage of Alexandrium, which is called a cyst. Uh, so this organism blooms in the spring and summer. We have these, we call them vegetative cells that divide and grow and form these big toxic blooms. Uh, but as the cells run out of nutrients, they actually form these dormant cysts that rest down in the sediment. And this is how they survive in the winter when it's cold and dark and not such a great time to be a plankton swimming around in the water. When we study this organism, we actually use the distribution of these cysts to help us predict where and when a bloom might occur. The emergence of these cells from the cysts is temperature dependent, so if it's really cold, uh, they might not actually start a bloom, but as the bottom temperatures get warmer, we're finding that it's more likely for blooms to actually originate in Arctic waters. Uh, so on the ship, we were sampling sediments to look for cysts, we were collecting water samples to look for these swimming, dividing cells. We had an instrument aboard the vessel called an imaging flow cytobot, or IFCB. Uh, and this is a robotic microscope that actually takes samples of water and runs them through and collects images of every single cell that it sees in the water. So we had one set up to sample from an underway seawater line aboard the research vessel. And as we were traveling, we were actually able to get real-time imagery of the entire phytoplankton community in the water, uh, including those harmful algal alexandrium cells that we're worried about. These blooms have really significant implications for ecosystem health and then of course for coastal communities that rely on marine resources for their subsistence and survival. So when we think about where and when these blooms occur, as scientists we're interested in the ecology and the life cycles of these organisms, but we also want to connect that to the broader ecosystem, which includes marine birds, mammals, and then of course human well-being is an incredibly important part of why we're doing this research. In 2022, when we were out on the research vessel, we actually detected very high densities of Alexandrium with the IFCB, and we immediately let our partners on shore know that there was a bloom in the water so that they could initiate a response and inform the rest of the community. Harmful algal blooms are just one change that these coastal communities are facing, but it is increasingly something that they are concerned about. Abhub is a data portal tool developed by my colleagues here at Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution. It integrates many different kinds of harmful algal data on a map format so that anyone can go in and explore the imagery or toxin data that's been collected for a given region. And we have a lot of data here from the Gulf of Maine, and more recently we've been able to add some of our Alaskan data to that portal. Given the bloom that we saw last year and other observations from previous years, we want to continue to collect observations and learn more about the distribution of these harmful algae in Alaskan waters. 
In 2023, we'll have an imaging aflow cytobot aboard the research vessel Sapuliak, and it's going to be riding along from June through October on several different research cruises and collecting imagery that we can use to assess for harmful algal blooms. Uh, and then more broadly, our group is working to understand some fundamental questions about Alexandrium in Alaskan waters, such as where are these populations coming from and what are the implications for the region as the Arctic waters continue to warm and change.